guys, welcome back to another episode here from the Hermit Craft server with your goat. <laughs> oh man, oh, what a week. I had sleepless nights uh, to, yeah, work with the hive mind on the project of today's episode. It's insane. <laughs> Oh, but I'm tired. Uh, yeah, sometimes, you know, the effort that goes into actually designing and creating these things are more brutal than actually building stuff. And I haven't placed a single block and already like 200 man hours easily went into the project of today's episode. Sometimes I wonder if you're really going a bit overboard. <laughs> But who cares? <laughs> That's what we do. Oh, yeah. But before we jump into today's episode, there's so much um, that we need to talk about and do. Um, of course, as usual, commemorating the epic, epic moment. And I guarantee you, to you, you will never see that again. Oh, and, I, and I'm still wearing my cape. And when I wear my cape, my butterfly wings are disabled. I need to change that. Um, yeah, but here we go. By Eza. Actually, uh, coming um, from Indonesia. And we actually got a pretty active fan base in Indonesia on the Hermitcraft server, uh, which uh, is cool. So shout outs to you guys. And yeah, check this out. Um, Ren and I, as the sniffers, I tell you, you will never ever see that again. Oh my god, uh, it was of course fun, you know, having fun is uh, the key thing, but um, you guys mocking me and saying, oh, the mighty goat being uh, the butt of a sniffer. <laughs> okay, okay, I give you that. I give you that. You can have that. <laughs> it's never gonna happen again. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so thank you, Eza. Amazing um, fan art piece. Um, love it to bits. And there were so many cool pieces about the sniffer incident, about the robots uh, yeah, colliding and all the crazy stuff that happened in the last episode. And that, of course, is what makes somebody like me that yeah does this stuff for you guys extremely happy to see you guys excited and having fun. So that's what it's all about, you know. You gotta have some fun and play with the kids and give them some success and then they'll be happy. So I think we played the most insane 4D chess ever and I think it succeeded because reading the comments and all the reactions and even uh, reading the comments on the epi other episodes, you guys all fell for it and I love it. Ah, Today... My friends, you will facepalm. No, <laughs> but you will say, okay, that is crazy. So let's talk about things, right? Um, we had our walker collision. As you know, the goat walker here, right? Uh, we built that like half a year ago uh, in wise foreshadowing that we might need some deterrence here um, to scare our crazy neighbors off. So now things developed completely differently. All of a sudden they built this camp there and they wanted to do a robot fight. And I mean, you know, I was we all were looking for a good excuse to launch the goat uh, walker anyways. So um, as I do, obviously when they had their walker done, I looked into it and my first suspicion was, hmm, the way the goat is constructed, um, the design by Pingu, um, it is extremely solid. So let's say if you have some TNT touching it at the front, it will not do much damage. Probably just blow off one piece of the snout. And what would ha that yeah, have meant? Well, that would have meant that clearly, I mean, their robot kind of was a failure. It kind of stopped the goat, I guess. But, you know, the goat is a slime walker. I mean, if it would have walked into their camp, let's say, would have got stuck uh, somewhere as well. Right? It, it, if it touches something, it stops. That's just what flying machines do. So, well, would stopping be considered destroying it? And even when it then happened, right, when it blew up, um, the buttercups that wit witnessed <laughs> the incident were also unsure if this could be uh, called a win. And I knew that this is going to happen, right? So I was thinking, okay, we need to make sure that the goat walker is actually destroyed. Because what we're trying to do here is a yeah, psychological move I by now learned successfully as a parent, right? Um, if you want uh, to make sure your kid is happy and, you know, feel success, 
you gotta give them a challenge, right? If you like wrestle with them, you cannot just lay down, let them pin you. They gotta work for it. And then they will be really satisfied and be distracted and do something completely else. And the same approach goes here. So if we give the buttercups a win and they think they own the goat, ha ha ha, they will probably stop. Because, well, they won, right? So obviously, with this um, you know, setup here, there was a high chance that this would not be satisfactory enough. Because, yeah, the goat would be barely damaged. So, in comes the butterflies. By the way, the remains of one butterfly, that one that went for uh, Scar's base, I removed already. In comes the butterflies. <laughs> so I needed to make sure that when the collision happens between these two, robots, my, when we launch the butterflies, they come in and I shoot quote-unquote an own goal and actually blow up the goat. So it's really destroyed and they got a real win. Now they almost threw a wrench in my plan because, you know, as you see, we barely hit the goat's butt here. Normally, you know, the flower would have made it a little bit further and the goat would have been a slightly further back and we would have plowed through it fully. So I was like, when they started messing up and locking out, and breaking the, the flower walker, I was like, oh my god, really? No way. They foiled my plan. But thankfully, you know, the butterfly came in rightfully. Uh, or still, you know, catching enough and blowing up the goat, uh, which then gave them the real sensation of, yes, we did it. And obviously stopping, stopping butterflies like that, I knew they will be able to stop them. But just in case, in case you don't believe me and say, hey, Doc is a bad loser now and he's trying to make up a story. No, 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 I'll show you. Look, in the trajectory of the butterfly, actually here, there, glass pane, right there. And also, same thing over at Green's base. So these butterflies would have stopped in any case. They would have never done any damage to the bases. Um, up here is the other glass pane, right there. Bam, right? So it's in the past, this butterfly I left. Um, so, um, yeah, it was in case some, you know, they failed to stop them, at least we wouldn't destroy their bases. And uh, we could sell it, I don't know, it was a scare tactics or something. So, yeah, everything worked to plan. I mean, now, you know, they're super satisfied. They're like, haha, clearly uh, we won this battle. Um, haha, he blew up. Uh, his own goat, complete uh, own goal, and the butterflies also completely failed. So for for them now, it's a it's an absolute win, and that was the goal of this operation: to give him a win, to make them feel okay. We owned the goat, and now we can do whatever, finish the back of our base, and leave the goat alone because we showed him. <laughs> yeah, that um, hopefully worked. I'm unsure though. So I'm not going to rest. <laughs> I'm going to make sure they cannot strike back. So, you know, last time, right, they, they hit us with the stupid motivation, <laughs> motivational quote. Live, love, love. First of all, we need to get rid of that thing. And secondly, we're going to own him so hard in the billboard department that no matter what motivational quotes or whatever they want to hang up in the perimeter, it's going to look so lousy in comparison to the most epic motivational billboard quote ever created in Minecraft history. <laughs> All right, we're going we're gonna to dominate the billboard business. So then we are prevented from future intrusion here. Whatever they do, it will not just even affect us because we just look at our epic billboard and are happy. So that is some real 4D chess we're playing here. <laughs> I am hoping, I'm hoping they're happy now. Um, and yeah, we can actually focus on other stuff. But yeah, today, this uh, episode, we create the billboard and that's the nail in the coffin. There's no way for them to come back from that. And um, that's that. But now we do the thing we've been all been waiting for, for such a, a long time. We're finally gonna get rid of the stupid motivational quote. Before though, a quick message of the sponsor of today's video. If you want to live, laugh and love more while using the internet safely, check out today's sponsor, ExpressVPN. By using ExpressVPN, you can mask your IP address and protect your privacy. 
you can quickly change your online location and access region locked content. And it's not only for Netflix, like for my favorite show Vikings here. This works for pretty much any streaming service you use. BBC iPlayer, Disney Plus and so on. Or here, Rick and Morty on the UK Netflix. Click, click and I can get it. Using ExpressVPN is super easy. You just download the client, preferably with the link in the video description. And then you just pick one server out of 94 locations worldwide. And with the simple click of a button, you are connected. Use the link expressvpn.com slash docm77 if you want to get ExpressVPN for free for 3 months. Thank you so much. Back to the video. Ah, yeah, that feels so good. Look at that. A clean canvas for us to draw onto. Only thing I just saw, I need to remove that obsidian stopper that is still there. That needs to go. And yeah, we used a simplified version of our trend just to get rid of it. Just, you know, having some fun small flying machines and then very satisfying explosion. Uh, for the last bit. <laughs> um, so, yeah, I need to clear out some space here because our billboard is a bit more complicated than your usual billboard. It's going to be pretty cool and it's it's massive. It's insane. It's going to be so expensive. Um, yeah, you'll see. <laughs> it took me three days straight grinding uh, to make sure to have the materials. Um, yeah, let me do some digging and I'll watch some Netflix on the side. All right, we're getting somewhere here. So I dug out a little hole over there. That will come in play a little bit later. For now, our main focus is on uh, yeah, framing our canvas, kind of laying out how big this whole thing will be, the most epic billboard ever made. And yeah, I'm standing on top here, right? And then we have this frame around it. And it's just a cobble cobbled a deep slate and some walls and it goes all the way around here and over there and all the way to back there it gives us a rough idea how big this thing will be um, yeah it needs somewhat around 9000 glass alone lots of materials but I think I should have everything together so now we can pretty much finish the frame and then start filling in um, yeah that should look really really epic Okay, man, this is huge now as I look at it. <laughs> oh, man. Yep. Well, inspired by all our fan artists, right? Now they put so much work into their artwork. I guess it's time to start painting. You know who the goat is as soon as I step in. A true OG, the hive mind is what I'm repping. Try to form against me, you won't prosper like the weapon. It's Doc, you probably know me better as a legend. Unstoppable. Like Thanos in his armor. Be Minecraft with a snap, then go become a farmer. Take your team to calm you. You don't want no problem. I'm out of this world. I have you, yo, nope. We can keep calmer. Can't copy my gameplay, you see in the scriptures. These ain't YouTube videos. These here are motion pictures. Skills so ridiculous. Evade what they try to hit me with. You search for diamonds. That's what the doc is building with. We the hot man. That's who I'm in the building with. Unstoppable crew. You don't know who you dealing with, boy. Act tough and I give you one warning. I'm too skilled, homie. I can one shot of water. Pride. Optimize. Only pride. Yeah. Pride. Optimize. Yeah. Pride. Let's go. Pride. Uh, pride yeah. the whole team. This is lovely. Look at that. No squirrely, you know, italic uh, letters, cursive. You know, I refer to it as to cursive last time. Uh, that's how you would call it in German, cursive. That means, you know, um, yeah, italic 
language for a uh, letter format and yeah this is just print <laughs> straight up how a newspaper would be printed S straight lines man ah. but yeah we are far from done obviously this is pretty cool but not insanely cool right i mean it's just a huge sign and yeah of course it was not expen uh, not cheap uh, clearly but um, yeah we want to improve it further so i was thinking now as we have the base shape there first thing we need is we need to give it some depth some coolness some 3d-ish effect that's why i'm thinking i would double up on the you know text and um, yeah also make it uh, light up a little bit and i think that should look pretty cool then I'm missing a bit on redstone ore, to be honest. Uh, funnily enough, not on diamond ore. So we've got still plenty in the back pocket. But yeah, I have to go around and uh, mine about five stacks um, of uh, redstone ore now. Uh, so we can continue. But yeah, believe me, this thing will look epic. We have some open spaces here. Um, that uh, yeah will be filled as well. And up there, you can see there's a huge open space still where we haven't filled in the glass pattern. And if you look at it now, you can see, right, it stands out. Um, you can see um, it's a, a hole. Um, later, though, we will use this glass pattern uh, to blend that in a little bit. You'll see the effect. But, um, yeah, first, um, it's time to grind a bit, watch something on the side, and, um, yeah, get some more redstone ores. Oh yeah, the mirror effect or a 3D effect. Yes, this looks so cool. Man, this thing is so expensive. <laughs> uh, soon we'll have to go diamond mining again. I see it coming. <laughs> uh, but it's looking so good. I couldn't go without, you know, going all out. Look at it, like with the 3D effect now. Really cool and lighting behind it here with some end rods so it didn't cheap out on that it didn't it didn't use torches or anything like that but yeah that gives it way more depth ah uh, yes <laughs> you know this is the kind of motivational quotes i can i can uh, start to like <laughs> no i really love it i mean come on who cannot uh, love goat grind optimize automate thrive Oh yeah, that that's motivating, man. That's I'm digging that. Not some stupid yellow love, love, love. Blah, blah, blah. <laughs> that's the way, man. Straight lines, straight into your brain. Grind, you better grind and also optimize, man, and automate, and then you thrive. You hear me? Straight message. <laughs> okay, cool. So now the basic message is there. But we wouldn't be, you know, goading it out if we would not use the power of the hive mind to make things ten times cooler. <laughs> so, obviously, now as the sign is done, we need to hive mind size it. Wait, is that a word? Can we use that? Hive mind size? <laughs> well, we just made it up. But it would make sense, right? Hive mind aside, just from a linguistic... What's going on up there? What? Okay, dude, what are you doing? I mean, all right. <laughs> I already m thought the the butterfools did something again, but nope, all good. <laughs> it's just a wandering trader. All right, so now, as I said, we need to hive mind the size this thing. And yeah, I dug a hole at the beginning before we start building here, right? And whenever we dig a hole, we put some crazy stuff inside, uh, like a tomato that just spawned um yeah <laughs> um but yeah we surely gotta do that so we're gonna put something cool animated up in there which we can trigger right our sign or our billboard is gonna be interactive that's right <laughs> whoop that slime just dropped okay so uh, if you want to have something interactive you obviously first need a trigger to 
trigger the interaction, <laughs> I guess. So I thought it would be cool because we have some space here, right? And we have some space up there, obviously, where the hole is. So here will be the trigger. And I thought, um, why not use a target block and scale it up as well, do some nice pixel art for it, and you have to aim for the target block, uh, hit its center, and when you do, you trigger the animation of our billboard. And I think that's a cool way to do that. So I think, um, yeah, let's start building a upscaled target block. With the lettering, by the way, each letter takes up a chunk. Um, but not the eyes. You know, whenever we have I, there's always a distance of four blocks between each letter. And um, yeah, that's, for example, how it's done in newspapers, right? There wouldn't be, like, you wouldn't go in block settings. So uh, you see stuff is not in line, like the the I here, right? It's not in line with the O also. But um, yeah, otherwise it would look weird. You would have to shift the I over to the middle column of the T here. And then the, the N, uh, everything would skip over and it would look weird. So, you know, this is the typical way you do it. If you have a, a yeah, consistent distance between the lettering, um, then that creates this yeah, used, you know, look um, straight, clean. You're used to read, right? It's just, um, yeah, how it works. So, yeah, I think uh, everything looks cool. Let's build an upscale target block right there. And then we see what we can animate. All right, target block installed, looks good. And we have real target blocks here in the middle that can actually detect the signal. So if you hit a bullseye, um, this thing will do something. And what it will do is, let's see if you can get in there. Okay, let's get some scaffolding. Is it will send a signal upwards um, to our animation then we will build. So let's go up here and check it out. And over, it's a bit tight here, everything. Probably break that out. Okay, so, you know, we just detect here, right? Um, let's break this out real quick. So um, we have a simple setup, just a note block and um, piston, redstone block, sitting right here at the target block. So whatever target block you hit, this triggers, pushes down once and sends a red, redstone signal this way. And now we want to transport it up and we're doing that using the scaffolding here. And when a signal comes in, this trapdoor will open and that um, changes what uh, age the um, scaffolding has, right? So we can look at the thing, you know, targeted block here on the right, uh, distance zero, right? And if I open this, this uh, trapdoor here, if you look at it now, distance becomes one. And that goes for all of them, all the way up. And before they're always zero. That means by doing this, we can actually uh, send a signal up. So yeah, and you know, we hit the thing, redstone signal comes in, goes up, and now we can uh, check if the signal was transferred properly via the scaffolding. So let's go to our hole up there and yeah, block is left behind that is nice I had a piston here that grabs the signal and yeah to read out the signal is pretty straightforward I mean you just come up here with the scaffolding right and we could see the distance change so the observer will be able to detect that block state change and then just uh, send the signal up and we get a quick pulse out of here and um, yeah now let's quickly get that uh, concrete block back in position and then we can hit the target and see if the signal gets transferred up. It's a relatively quick way to transport a signal up for one tick per scaffolding. Whoa! Holy moly, almost jumped to my death. Okay, let's see. We can also already try to do some target practicing. I mean, this also obviously is nice for some velocity attacks. Okay, was that a hit? I think so, yeah, we were on there. Now let's see. Ah, yeah. Cool. Our concrete block got pushed up. Sweet. And um, I guess now we can start building um, yeah, the redstone for the animation. And yeah, this whole project, man, this is like <laughs> a perfect example for how the hive mind works and how things just happen. I mean, <laughs> classic. 
you know, I first worked on the billboard to, together with Jeromus. Um, we love to do that, just hanging out, right, and designing some stuff and talking about life. And we had this thing then, and then we had the empty spots there, and I was talking to Jeromus saying, yeah, we definitely probably want to add some stuff there, but I'm not quite sure yet. So I had to sleep over it at night, and somehow, you know, at some point, inspiration hits, and you know, yeah, that's it. This is what we're going to do. So... In the morning, I go like, hey, Hive Mind guys, I have a great idea. What do you think about this, everybody? Yeah, cool. So first, I start working on it with methods, and we're already two, three hours in, and we're kind of making progress, and then eventually some few other people show up, and um, all of a sudden, like, three people are working on it, or four. All of a sudden, Void gets uh, involved. I'm going to link Void's channel in the video description. Um, very good technical channel, um, quarry technology, uh, flying machines, uh, high expertise. We're working on it. Uh, <laughs> like uh, Purple uh, is working on it. Um, and then all of a sudden, um, like Pingu shows up and we're like, hey, Pingu, come here, our savior. We're having trouble animating the last bit. And then Pingu is in it. And then all of a sudden, there's like five people tinkering with the thing for hours and hours. And if you combine the man hours, like everybody spent eight hours there, boom, another 50 hours just to develop the simple thing. <laughs> well, simple, you say. It's not simple. It's pretty cool. But yeah, this is how the hive mind thing kind of works. And people always say, hey, can I kind of become part of the hive mind where w what is the hive mind well mainly of course we just hang out in cycraft uh, discord right go to one of the mango's videos it's linked there always to cycraft tech discord and then over time you know uh, like you hang out get involved with the tech community and then uh, there's trusted um, chat rooms and yeah then eventually you know you're in the mix um, good place to learn a lot of stuff questions can be answered and so on so this is a good hub for hive mind activities but yeah as i said all of a sudden five people tinkering right and uh, yeah we on it and it was 3 a.m in the morning until the prototype finally worked then so yeah and now i guess um yeah let me start doing some redstoning and um, now it's time to execute what uh five people took like yeah 40 hours in total to build All right, look at this. And I guess <laughs> you guessed it by now. We are building a fully animated piston right here. And I think, just triple check the redstone again. I think we're looking good. Um, it should work if I did not make a mistake. So here goes nothing, I guess. Let's give it a whirl. We go down here. Right, and then we have our target block, and we can hit that. And uh, yeah, by doing so, we can trigger our piston up there. <laughs> okay, let's see. Uh, I think, was that on? Yes, it was. <laughs> oh, beautiful. Yes! Okay, that looked so cool! Nice! You know, and then you can, like, fly through the perimeter, and if you want to have some fun, you know, you just fly, right? Fly towards the billboard, and then you can do a velocity shot if you feel like it. Try to hit a bullseye and see if you can get the piston to activate. Duh! Simple shot. And... Look at it. There it goes again. <laughs> yes. <laughs> oh, man. This is so cool. We can also manually trigger it, and uh, then we can see the animation a bit better. I feel like if I hit this note block here, then we can look at the whole shebang. So um, looking at it from the front, okay, clicking. There goes the piston arm. Because over it looks really clean. You cannot see the flying machines at all. A little bit, of course, here. But I don't even think that it's too bad. Because, well, you know, what would be inside a Minecraft piston, right? Redstone components, obviously. <laughs> so, 
But yeah, the challenge obviously was to make a flying machine that kind of is hidden behind the whole structure there. And that was a complex process. For example, to push along such a, you know, a massive piece of blocks, right? You maybe we push this whole piston head here out pretty much. That's a 4 by 16 area. To do so, we always have layers of slime, honey, slime, honey, slime, honey. And then stack that all together. Uh, into uh, yeah 16 segments and then we have that's how these flying machine you always cascade right that's the concept of it so 16 and then we bring it down to four here four individual flying machines and uh, that are triggered by an uh, outrigger of two and then eventually here's the trigger uh, for it all and then of course we also have the puller for the piston arm that also fits in a two high kind of footprint right so it's um, not really visible here unfortunately those i couldn't really avoid those we needed um, it's a self-returning flying machine not really it needs to be triggered and that happens via these stoppers here and return stations and yeah let's trigger it one more time and look at the animation in its full glory i think it turned out pretty good it's you you know to make to have zero gaps there on the way back there's pretty much no visible gaps on the way out a little bit but um yeah from a bit of a distance uh you know how this is meant to be looked at maybe from roughly like here let's do it again yeah then the animation barks out a bit here this looks good with the free cam really nice I mean, this is this is uh, absolutely cool. <laughs> so yeah, and owns their billboard by a million times. <laughs> Fully functioning automated billboard. I'm contemplating still, because right now, um, you know, it's you don't want to spam this thing, right? So you want to aim, and then you see if it triggers. But I feel at the moment the response time, the feedback, um, you know, to tell you you hit. Um, you hit the target block is not fully there yet. I might, I might I don't know, look into it a little bit, put something there that gives you an indicator, hey, you got a hit, uh, don't uh, shoot the target again, um, or something like that. Um, I was thinking maybe we could have a simulated redstone line kind of going up behind the text, right? And when you hit, we somehow light this uh, redstone line up a bit, so it flashes and it looks like a power got transmitted upwards to the piston. Maybe we can meander that behind here somehow and make it look cool. But that would require more fiddling. I'm really happy that this is um, working by now. Let me know what you think about the redstone idea or what other ideas of indicating that a hit was done. And yeah, don't tell me, put fireworks there. That's, yeah, that. I want to have a more fancy solution. Okay, lastly though now, um, we are looking at this hole, at this gaping hole behind the piston. And if you go further away, probably with YouTube compression now, you cannot see it too much, but I think we can hide it even better. And here comes our glass pattern now into play. I started placing here already. And we need this gap, obviously, as this flying machine here needs to come through, right? So we cannot just close it off here or so but we can make it so it's barely visible. And we're gonna achieve that by stacking up glass here. Um, yeah, let me get to that. That's the last bit for this build for, for now, I guess. And then we can check it out and see um, if this makes a big difference. I'm also thinking while I'm here, probably should do, throw some, some lighting, some oops, some light sources around. And I don't, I don't know how many times I fell into this gap. <laughs> I got I got cheap uh, back here and stopped uh, doing the full glass floor connecting. But uh, you know, after I fell into this dang hole here for like thirty times while building, uh, staring up, you know, and then plop, I might just fill this little bit in here with glass as well. All right, so yeah, let me try to camouflage the hole a bit. Ah, yeah, look at that. You can pretty much not really tell there's a hole anymore. Looks just like one of the other caves. I might smoothen off this ledge right here in the middle a little bit that is in there. But that should then definitely do the trick. Yeah, it, this is, needs to be a little bit smoother, this transition here. 
But other than that, you know, the camouflage pattern with the glass definitely works well. Yeah, let me let me try to get in there and chop off that ledge up there a little bit here. We need to smooth that out. We need to smooth that out. So yeah, let's just I don't know, make it look like a little bit more natural back here, so it's not such a sharp edge. Then hopefully this should be perfect and blend in real nicely here. I got some passive lighting via glow lichen and so on going on. Not too much though. So it's uh, yeah not too bright. That also uh, makes it uh, stand out a little bit more. All right. Let's move that and move that. Okay. Okay, that should break the edge there a little bit. Let's have a poke uh, over there maybe. Yeah, that is not really visible. Okay, let's get out and have another look and see how it feels. Yep, that helped already. Yep, that blends in way nicer. Let's look from down here. Yep. Maybe I want to throw a little bit more glow lichen up in there. Um, just a tiny bit. Whoops. Oh, 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 don't. <laughs> Let's get up there. Yeah, here. So in the backdraft. Yeah, we got some more glow lichen. Let's put some here. I have a little bit there. Maybe some there. Maybe some there. Okay. And then maybe a little bit over here. Good. That should do it now. I mean, you know, the details. Devil is in the details. But, yeah. Uh, you know, spend so much time building this thing now, you want to make sure it's perf perfect, right? And looks, it's really neat. Yeah, look at that. I mean, you can not really tell that there's any gap anymore. And you can also, the piston return pushers, you can barely make out either. So that is neat. Really cool. Let's shoot it one more time. <laughs> Get out of the water. Oh, the taking off of the water sometimes is still so... So painful, okay, and take a shot. We missed. Yep, from like five meters away. Okay, let's try that again. It's a good reason to practice some velocity shots, right? Boom, that was on. Okay, and there moves our piston. <laughs> Yeah, cool. Oh man, so nice. Awesome. All right. Hmm. Now I'm thinking maybe you know we can have a, fo a whole block that gets moved with it. But <laughs> oh, oh, that already took so long. Hmm. Well, it's the next morning right now, and another sleepless night of staying awake until 3:30 a.m because I was not fully satisfied yet. I mean, we have a piston, right? But a piston is supposed to push something. And yeah, we've been pushing Witter Skulls around, right? That is one of our most crazy machines we built this season, the Witter Reactor. So I thought we should yeah, commem commemorate that as well. So that's why I spent all night uh, fiddling around with Pingu and Voiding again, making... Um, a flying Witter Skull. <laughs> and I already started uh, this morning. It's like, I don't know, 10-ish or so right now. Um, I made it since uh, 7.30. Pearl is on. We can always see that. Um, you know, Australian times when she's on. Um, it's early. <laughs> My time. And yeah, dug out uh, enough space here to add um, another flying machine into the mix. And, you know, did the camouflaging you know, with the glass pattern we've been using and uh, already disguising this hole here nicely. Looking at it pretty much almost seamlessly blends in. I mean, sure, you, you know, if you look closely, but the further you go away, the more it really nicely blends. So, yeah, I might work with subtle glow lichen patches here and there um, to give it a little bit more glow to take some sting out of the... the 
yeah, wall layer here. If you look at it from the front, it tends to be a little bit darker just because it's a thicker layer of glass pretty much. Have the same effect here as well a little bit. So I might throw in some passive light in somewhere further down to just brighten this up a little bit. And that would probably yeah, make it even more seamless. But so far so good. Um, I'm pretty satisfied how how the camouflaging works so far. All right, um, I'd say um, let's hammer out another quick flying machine build. I'm, I'm in the grind, so yeah, let's go. <laughs> Right, looking good. Using the same concept here for moving a solid wall pretty much, stacking slime and honey above each other and then you have the engine pulling everything along here. And yeah, on the back side we simply have everything, the rest attached here. Um, so we pull these four and the rest along like this. We can push up to five on the way back. So, yeah, pretty much quite a similar setup, but not really. <laughs> it's a similar concept. Let's say this. Um, so let's check it out. Let's see it move in. Let's come up here and do a normal test for now. Yep, self returning. Very good. Looks good. Okay, let's look at it like this from the front. Probably want to have empty hand. Okay, let's fly out and trigger it. Nice. Cool. Looking good. Okay, so it's chained uh, to the piston arm that comes out. Here, this is the turn station for the piston arm, and we trigger at four tick delay. Just read out, you know, this piston will fire. It gets um, powered by this observer here, and then this observer detects it uh, when it pushes up, and that actually triggers the return of this flying machine. But we can also use the signal to chain events, pretty much, right? So we just come through here, up, fretstone, and then here's the trigger. Um, we just push a piston in front of this observer and there's also one on the top. There's two engines pretty much sitting here and we need to trigger them both simultaneously. So now we should have chained these events together. Let's first of all have a look how the blending in worked. Oh yeah, look at that. Uh, it's like, zzz, like it's even better than the other one. Oh yeah, because it's just better lit up. I need some more lighting up in the top section here, I feel, to blend this in a little bit better. I put some glow lichen into the walls here. That helped. But I think the top bit needs a little bit more light here, this area here. Maybe a hidden torch somewhere. Yeah, yeah we'll get there. That's some, some fiddling around with details and stuff, I mean also part of the process you cannot just nail everything like first try pretty much okay let's see if the chaining of events does happen I mean oh we hit okay yes piston arm moves that's good yeah ah yeah and it triggered the skull and it returns. Nice, nice, nice. Okay, I think about roughly this is the best distance to watch it. Okay, let's um, fire at the target again. A bit higher. I think that one was on. Yeah. Rim, and then the skull accelerates. Nice. Yes. Cool. Another little detail added. 
still contemplating how to give some more feedback if you had a successful hit right away so it feels a little bit more satisfying you know because there is this delay until the piston um, fires right it's like maybe two and a half seconds or so i was thinking maybe i could add some feedback yeah but from a distance this blends in perfectly you can't see redstone components i mean yeah if you zoom in like that if you try hard yeah i use blast furnaces on the as the return stations here because i needed to have a immovable unsticky object there and the blast furnaces actually work really well to blend in yep i mean the pistons there you can see a little bit but i think in total now this is cool yeah now i'm still contemplating the redstone idea sending a signal through i was also thinking maybe redstone lamps right you hit and then it, it kind of meanders through here and then there's another cool thing i don't know if you realize but that's what you get when you work with extremely smart people i'm chilling right with ragu he's one of, he's the guy that actually works at the cern right at the hadron collider a super smart guy um works there in coding and physics and so on and he says man you could definitely do something cool look at that look at thrive and take out the tnr and it's like hive oh snap hive m and f and the grind ind so there's actually hive mind in there <laughs> and he was thinking maybe you can figure out an idea like when you hit this right it goes like h i v e mind you know in a in a sequence so i was trying around with it a little bit um like you know having pistons for example behind the letters for example and then they move but it's not really distinguishable from the rest it don't really stands out too much you see something is moving but if you're a little bit further away the effect goes away right away lighting up is also not really an option during daytime the difference in lighting is just too minimal that you really see something also we have the the um, rods behind so if you can think of some smart and clever way how we could you know have hive mind standing out here that would be much appreciated hard to tell i was thinking maybe put some just simply put some fireworks behind but you know the glass is also shielding lots of the particles but that could probably be an option like hive you know have uh, firework launchers behind and then bam 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 and uh, make sure that the particles are stay behind the lettering a little bit that was my idea but you know ah, this is always fireworks is always the go-to thing you know uh, you want to have some effect on something use fireworks i mean it always works but i'm also i'm thinking yeah there must be a better way i'm feeling <laughs> but yet you know there was not the eureka moment sometimes it just takes time you cannot like brain can only process so much there's a lot of creative creative ideas in this thing already so i guess we have to sleep on it for a week or so and yeah i'll take your feedback maybe some of you guys has the eureka moment just now so if you do don't hesitate to leave a comment right you know time is of the essence with a lot of things especially as well also yeah with our yeah limited edition creator cards right uh, there's about yeah they are on sale until july uh, 31st so only a few more days and then that's it um so yeah if you want to get them make sure to check out link in the video description right important <laughs> if you want some no fomo allowed <laughs> all right so yeah hmm i think we have a pretty decent 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 billboard by now let me know if you have any ideas to make it even more epic so we can show these buttercups who's boss once and for all <laughs> uh, but i think we can call this a very successful endeavor man we crushed them last time we gave them a win everything worked perfectly like clockwork i mean I wasn't pranked. Nothing happened in this week. Maybe they're just satisfied at the moment, basking in the victory. In the meantime, we did preventative measures that no 
text or whatever they put here or motivational quote would ever affect us much because we can always refocus on our insane billboard here that knocks whatever they do out of the water. <laughs> So either they come up with a better billboard like this or can forever remain, remain silent. They can't bother me with it anymore. So yeah, I'm thinking, I'm thinking the goat is on a path to victory, my friends. That is for sure. The other day I caught a live stream of Scar and was, uh, you know, snooping around a little bit what he was doing. And I saw, yes, something interesting going on here backstage so he created this whole staging area here this is, yeah i still you know gotta give scar props man scarland is just so amazing look he has a locomotive hoisted up here for servicing and then there's some you know all of the cards that go around right so cool look at the different cards he made whoa <laughs> animatronic shop here i mean come on It is, it is really cool. Gotta give it to the guy. This, <laughs> yeah, it's just an amazing builder. And yeah, this is you know his his dream build here, right? The whole park shebang. So if we'd help him with this project, I'm pretty sure you know that would cause him to become very loyal to us and maybe abandon um, his old friends, or at least you know be a little bit more. Hey, we shouldn't mess with Doc. He's such a nice guy. You know what I mean? So he has um, a job offer here. What is this all? You know, this is a drill, right? Like a heavy drill you would have in a workshop. Look how cool it is. He actually found a use for the stupid flower pot. Genius. Man, what a guy. And it looks so good. Man, just envision, you know, he's just good. What can you say? <laughs> Helmet hung up there, nice. So, yeah, here's the job offer, right? He's looking for a handyman, redstoner for Scarland. Scarland is in need of a redstone genius. That's us, with the hive mind, right? To bring the magic to the life of the greatest theme park in Minecraft. Are you up for the task? <laughs> Easy. Sign up today and try out for the position. All you have to do is demonstrate your skill in any way you see fit. Benefits um, of the position, we get a weekly salary of 32 diamonds, so we could even fleece them for diamonds. Free Scarland foods, that is good. An office, uh, permanent base in there, in the heart of the, you know, enemy's territory. Mm -hmm. Uniforms, I mean, oh God. <laughs> From my last experience changing skins, I'm not too fond of about that, but, you know, could probably live with it. Sign up with your name below and impress me with your knowledge and skill. Uh -huh. Cup, the redstone wonder. Impulse, redstone genius for hire. Tango. Oh, Tango is also in for uh, in a Tango of the Tech variety Ferris wheel. Well, I have several concepts that would work well for a park. Thinking maybe a free fall tower would be a cool attraction. Uh, there's plenty of cool things you could do. I mean, and for reference, I mean, what do we, you know, I mean, the one and only goat, Doc M77, hive mind power. Mm -hmm. Need I say more? Question mark. <laughs> I mean, if that is not a pitch. Mm -hmm. Perfect. I think we will apply. Let's see what comes from it. I mean, not, not a given that he will actually hire us or what. But I'm pretty sure we could build something that impresses him so much that there's no chance in heck. <laughs> no chance in hell. I mean, I think you can say that. Um, that he will not hire us. Hmm. Yeah, and other news, and yeah, that's where we come to slowly but surely wrapping up our episode. Um, Cup came over and he handed me this, um, you know, talking about books and writing stuff. Doc M77 Redstone Live and the Goats. A collection of short tidbits from the goat himself, Doc M77. Hmm, and here I think, you know, He has certain points, so we talk about dog on goats, dog on life, 
dog on redstone. And we have pretty much one page to fill. In theory, we could make this longer. But um, yeah, here is where you come in play. This book will be displayed in Cup's Hermitcraft Museum. So it will become a permanent thing later. Also in the world download, you can go and read it then. And every hermit fills that out. So, you know, with motivational quotes or, you know, just thoughts, haikus, whatever you come up with. And I would love if you guys in the comment section help out there. You know, main, maybe we, we address in the fan fiction writers right here. <laughs> get those guys involved as well. Come on, get out of the shadows. <laughs> show you show yourself but that would be cool if you guys could leave amazing comments so we are turning the comment of the week around today um, i'm actually asking you to write cool comments and then we pick from them next episode and fill it into the book that would be cool and um, yeah would be much appreciated um, if you creative writers out there uh, help me out and look at that by the way that's doing my inspection Maybe Pearl was involved with that too, but they actually cleaned up their mess. Hmm. Can't believe it. Mumbo too? Wow, how? And when? I was on so much. They must have hired Pearl too. And there's some eggs left down there. <laughs> Missed out on those. <laughs> but yeah, they actually cleaned up. Wow. Okay, then. I guess I leave the butterfly in the air as a little monument, um, you know, for, for what happened there. Probably can clean it up a little bit. At least here on the front, I could remove, remove these blocks here. Then, then it looks a little bit nicer. It shouldn't... Uh, it's, oh yeah, it, it remained it remain its shape. Nice. Another one of uh, Pingu's solid redstone machines, <laughs> just indestructible. Well, yeah, okay, it was easy to stop, right? But it didn't really shatter. It's intact for the most bit. I mean, yeah, just looks, yeah, it is intact. Probably this one could be restarted almost, I feel. And there's not, not so much broken with it. Yeah. <laughs> Technically, probably, yeah, nah, nah, okay, it's a bit, yeah, it's, it's, it would be a bit fiddly, but it could be, well, we'll see, maybe it comes in handy one more time. I mean, it's maybe not too bad to remind Green, you know, we have a butterfly that can be easily fixed and reach his base uh, within a few seconds. Might be not the worst thing to leave that thing here, to be quite frank. Wait, there's one, one, um, block i want to break out this one here this can go easily okay cool so with that said please guys right fill me in hit me hit me with your comment ideas dog on redstone dog on life and dog on goats and um yeah whatever else you want to comment of course <laughs> so yeah uh, next time i will not forget to take out my cape i want to get my butterfly wings back um, I think I'm over losing these butterflies. They died for a good cause. And <laughs> with that said, I see you in the next episode. Make sure to leave a like, subscribe, all the good deals. Bye. Oops.